Yes. So we will have a relation between focal length and radius of curvature in a curved mirror. Uh, we have seen what is focal length, what is radius. Every curved mirror is a part of a sphere. Suppose you take a concave mirror. Of course, you must be ready with your paper and a pen now. Take a paper and pen, start writing, right? Everything what I write, you have to write it. Because the gist of the derivation, this focal length and radius relation, uh, we will write it and we will study the gist, right? All the things, sentences and other things you can uh, join with them, uh, join to the derivation later after looking into the notes or textbook, whatever it is. But the most part of the derivation must be studied along with the teaching, okay? Be ready with pen and paper, go and bring pen and paper. Don't uh, watch this as if you are watching a film. No film heroes and heroines will come here. I am the only character you, uh, that you will see throughout the film. So have a pen, have a paper. Be ready. Correct? Right. Now, so we have a concave mirror. Its curvature is a part of a sphere. It will have a center. If you complete it, you will get the center. And if parallel rays are incident on the concave mirror, which are very close to the axis, after reflection, they pass through the focus. Uh, in a concave mirror, they really pass through focus. They don't appear to diverge from that focus. They really pass through the focus. And this is the midpoint of the total uh, uh, area available of the uh, area of the uh, mirror, reflection area. Uh, that is the geometrical area. Its center is called pole. And you know the distance from the pole to focus is called focal length and all the distances must be measured parallel to the principal axis and uh, distance from the center to the uh, pole is called radius of curvature r okay now i'll take a parallel beam of light now my job is to find out the relation between f and r and uh, in the beginning itself, I'll write what I am going to derive, f equal to r by 2. This is what we are going to derive. Every time when you study the derivation, you must know at the end where you have to reach, right? Simply keep on writing, don't keep on writing whatever you like and whatever you get, and finally don't underline whatever the answer you get. So you should get a particular answer. You must have it in mind that I have to get this answer at the end. This is the answer that we have to get at the end. Okay, so now I will rub it. I'll write somewhere here, f equal to r by 2. So, focus is always at the center of the line joining center and pole. It should be at the middle. So, this distance should be double this distance. f should be half of r. Okay, take one ray of light, which is parallel to the principal axis, like this. Okay, now, sir, any ray of light incident on any reflecting surface, if you want to measure the angle of incidence, you should have a help of normal. Angle between the normal and the incident ray is called angle of incidence. Sir, where is normal? Simply connect the center to this point. You will get a normal. So this is the normal drawn like this. It is a dotted line because it is not a ray of light. Okay, so this is the angle of incidence. I will call it as theta. Theta is the angle of incidence. Okay. After reflection, you know very well with this. This is your friend now, actually. The parallel ray, uh, ray of light incident parallel to the principal axis is your best friend. You know how does it uh, move after reflection. What happens to that ray of light? So you keep on drawing this diagram as I draw this. Keep on drawing the diagram. Let your fingers know what is happening here and uh, let it be recorded in the brain. So take a concave mirror and uh, mark the principal axis. Geometric center is the pole and you have a center here that is the center of the full curvature and this is the focus where parallel rays meet. Okay, and you mark the focal length and radius of curvature. Right? Are you ready? So shall we proceed? Okay. So this ray should re get reflected at the same angle because angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So, and you know that you know very much about this ray it should pass through the focus and this is the angle of reflection angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection theta so those two thetas must be same so this is the normal drawn to the surface because it passes through the center that's why it's a normal and this is the angle between incident ray and normal 
reflected ray and normal we know that it gets reflected through the focus and these both are thetas that is over now uh, now you see here this line is parallel to this line because already we have announced that this is a paraxial ray ray which is parallel to the principal axis this is a bisector now should i consider this angle as the alternate angle to this one right to this angle because these two are parallel lines and this is a bisector and these two are alternate angles what is this angle 2 theta so shall i write this as 2 theta so this is 2 theta and this is 2 theta lines parallel here and a bisector as i draw this you two keep on listening and keep on writing the values right so a ray of light passes to the focus parallel to the principal axis initially and this is 2 theta angle of incidence angle angle of reflection same so these two are alternate angles 2 theta 2 theta okay now for this triangle okay i will name them this is center focus and i will call this as m ray of light hitting the point m on the mirror so this ray hits the point m on the mirror and gets reflected and uh, i will drop a perpendicular from here okay this is 2 theta so i will drop a perpendicular from here and i will call this as d m d of course what about this dp dp is negligibly small if this ray is very very close to the principal axis if the situation is like this if you have chosen a very uh, ray which is very close to the principal axis then if you had dropped a straight line here perpendicular here then this the d and p would have overlapped and as you take another ray which is very close to the principal axis they come closer so there is no gap between d and p d is almost over p if the ray is paraxial if it is very close to the principal axis okay now you see this triangle c f m in this triangle this is theta and this i want to know what is this angle if you know this angle of course i can go for the derivation these two angles are interior opposite angles to this angle this is the exterior angle 2 theta and for this 2 theta these are the two interior opposite angles exterior angle is always equal to sum of the interior opposite angles but this is 2 theta this is theta so this should be theta right or you can argue it like this way also these two are parallel lines and this pink line normal line to the surface passing through the center is a bisector this is theta this is theta alternate again so for these two rays parallel uh, sorry this line and this line parallel pink line is a bisector these two are alternate angles so this theta must be equal to theta whereas this two theta is alternate angle completely to this one so we have all the arrangements now theta theta and this is angle of incidence reflection this is uh, alternate angle to this whole two theta and for this theta this is alternate angle with this pink line as a bisector which is a normal line now if you want to derive this see see the tra search the triangles where these two things come because finally you have to get a relation between them f and r see radius is in this triangle right m c p or m c d and uh, where is uh, um, this focal length focal length is in this triangle uh, m f p so shall i take and remember this situation is an exaggerated situation actually these rays are very close to the principal axis and they are moving like this and they are making very very small angles like this that is the situation otherwise uh, you can't trace them so easily or you can't apply this uh, derivation the uh, the rays of light must be parallel to the principal axis and they must be very close then only they pass through the single focus otherwise they won't pass through the single focus okay uh, in such a situation when theta 2 theta things are very small you can go for tan theta when theta is very small tan theta is almost equal to theta or tan i is equal to almost equal to i tan x is almost equal to x so now you take tan theta what is tan theta here in this triangle now i will search this triangle 
triangle MCD. So in triangle MCD, MCD, right? In triangle MCD, and D and P are not much far away. They are very very close. So you can take uh, CD almost equal to CP. CD and CP are almost equal. This distance uh, is not very large. Okay, tan theta in this triangle MCD. This is a right angle triangle because this is a normal drawn. So normal means this should make 90 degrees. Tan theta is opposite side. What is opposite side? MD divided by uh, adjacent side that is CD. Right? So in the right angle triangle MCD, tan theta is, shall I mark it like this? So this is the triangle that I have considered. This one. So opposite side MD by adjacent side CD. Okay. Now, since when theta is very small and 2 theta, everything is very small, I can take tan theta almost equal to theta. So, that implies when theta is small, hope you are writing this, write along with me, otherwise you won't be able to follow. Don't watch like as if you are watching a movie, simply follow this along with your paper. So, when theta is very small, tan theta is almost equal to theta. So, shall I write theta almost equal to MD by CD. Equation 1. Similarly, go for 2 theta. You know what you have to get. R equal to 2F, F equal to R by 2. So, keep it in mind always. When you uh, study the derivations, you have to do like this. You should know what you are going to get finally. Then the derivation becomes easier. Otherwise, it will be stuck in the center. Uh, somewhere in between. You will not be knowing what to do, where you have to do, or wh what next you have to write. All these uh, troubles will come into picture. Okay, now you want radius. Oh, sorry, this one. Take 2 theta, tan 2 theta in the same triangle. So, in the right angle triangle, MFD, MFD, <coughs> take tan 2 theta. Of course, in this diagram, 2, two theta, theta appear to be larger. But again, I say, this is a situation where the ray of light is very close to the principal axis. Then only all those rays which are close to the principal axis meet at a single focus. Tan 2 theta is almost equal to or equal to opposite side by adjacent side. Once again, tan 2 theta opposite side MD divided by adjacent side FT. Tan 2 theta MD by FT. But when theta is very small, 2 theta is also very small. When two, th 2 theta is small or theta is small, we can write 2 theta almost equal to MD by, uh, because tan 2 theta is almost equal to uh, 2 theta MD by FT. Equation 2. Now, again, uh, now from, uh, if you want to compare these two equations, left hand side should be same, but this is 2 theta. This is only theta. So, shall we multiply this equation 1 by 2? When you multiply this, you will get 2 here, 2 here. So, you can compare the uh, right hand side. So, equation 1 multiplied by 2, what do you get? Equation 1 into 2 gives 2 theta almost equal to 2MD by CD. Am I right? Now, this is equation 3. Now comparing equations 2 and 3. Now it is purely mathematical. Comparing 2 and 3. Equations 2 and 3. What do we get? Yeah, uh, left hand sides are same. So the right hand sides. MD by FD is equal to 2MD by CD. Now, MD, MD can be written or it can be cancelled. Uh, what you will get? FD, invert this, invert on both the sides or bring this CD by 2 here, FD here. So, CD divided by 2 becomes FD, FD here, CD here, 2 here. CD by 2 is equal to FD and you know that CD can be almost written as equal to CP. So, because when the paraxial rays are incident, uh, this ray is when very close to here and this D and P are not much different. They are very close. So, shall I write CD as a, almost equal to CP? CD is almost equal to CP. What about FD? FD is almost equal to FP. So, CP by 2, FP by FP. 
Now what is CP? CP is nothing but radius of curvature. So CP is R, R by 2. What is FP? It is the distance from the pole to the focus that is focal length. So this is a derivation. So F equal to R by 2. So always when you derive the things, you must be very careful. If you don't want to get stuck somewhere in between, Sir, what, do, what to do in the next step? Usually in the examination, you will be under pressure because you will have to write all the things what you have studied throughout the year within three hours. And you will be having in mind that that problem what I have read the, uh, just five minutes back was tough. I have not answered it. Previous one mark question is pending and two marks question is uh, uh, not yet answered. All these, under all these pressures, you have to derive this. It is not so easy. So you must know the step-by-step -step procedure. If you know, if you already have a target, what I have to get, then these steps become very easy. So once you know that you are going to prove either R by 2 is equal to F or R is equal to double the focal length, radius is double the focal length or focal length is half the radius. If you know that after drawing this diagram, definitely you will come to know that you must take theta and you must take 2 theta because one double the other. And the best trigonometric function which will help you is tan theta because radius and focal length come here and this will be the common. You see the beauty of the derivation. In both these triangles, one which I have drawn using yellow color and one which I am going to draw in a, a green color. So you are going to take another triangle, you see, in the triangle MFD, see, green color, like this. In both the triangles, MD is common, which we are going to cancel later. And if, if MD is going to be cancelled later by taking common, that is opposite side, and FD and CD are all in the adjacent sides, it is tan theta which will help you. So, if you have an algorithm like uh, uh, arrangement for the derivation, a diagram, theta, two thetas, all alternative and alternate angles, and then finally taking tan theta, tan two theta, and getting the equations, multiplying them by 2, finally arriving at this. So you should have a flow chart like this. What I have to do? What I have to get? What is the method followed? Which is uh, taken for help? Best is tan theta. This is common for both the equations, tan theta equations. One is tan theta, another is tan 2 theta. So these two will come in picture. So finally you will get radius is equal to 2f or f is equal to r by 2. So don't buy hard it like a formula. Imagine always focus is at the center of uh, uh, center and uh, pole. Focus is at the middle of center and pole. That means focal length is always half of the radius. So this is, this is maybe a three marks question, very easy derivation. Obtain the relation between focal length and radius of curvature. But remember, this can be applied only for mirrors, not for lenses. Of course, you are going to study lenses. This doesn't help for lenses. This is only for mirrors. Now usually, this question uh, will be like this. Obtain the relation between focal length and radius of curvature of a mirror. It may be concave mirror or convex mirror. Or they may particularly mention you obtain the relation between focal length and radius of curvature using a concave mirror. Then this derivation holds good. And all the diagram here, uh, even a ray of light uh, uh, falls parallel to the principal axis and all. But suppose you are asked to draw the diagram for a convex mirror and go for the derivation. Obtain the relation between focal length and radius of a convex mirror. Uh, so far it is not asked. Uh, they have not mentioned a particular ray diagram and uh, they have not asked to uh, derive it. They have asked you to derive it f equal to r by 2. That's all. So you can prefer this. Now suppose the same uh, derivation using convex mirror. How can we do that? Derivation is as it is. No change even in the notations. Only the ray diagram is different. So you have to consider such a parallel ray of light passing through the focus uh, at some angle of instance and then you have to continue. Now let us draw the ray diagram. I don't do the uh, derivation again because that derivation is same as uh, this one. Now take a convex mirror. How to draw the ray diagram for the derivation of f equal to r by 2 or r equal to f using a convex mirror. Again, I take a convex mirror. See how do I, how do I take a convex mirror? I take it in such a way that I uh, give an opportunity for the ray of light to travel from um, um, uh, left to right, that is along positive x-axis. So this, I always follow this rule. Now, 
this is the principal axis this is the pole but while drawing the center and the focus remember if parallel rays are incident on a convex mirror they diverge in such a way that they appear to come from the focus here focus comes here and uh, center will be somewhere here because the curvature gets completed in this side, side center is here whereas in a concave mirror it is uh, uh, so sorry this is not the way this is the way for a concave mirror center lies here right inside the mirror whereas uh, sorry uh, center lies on the reflecting side here the center is not on the reflecting side it is on the inner side okay now right ah you have to consider a parallel ray of light you remember what did we do in this diagram we took so this is the focus this is the center exactly at double distance a ray of light incident along a parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus if you want to show that this angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection you have to draw a normal which is passing through the center i and r are same theta theta that's what we have considered and we dropped m d perpendicular here and this is the pole now we will do the same thing here take a ray of light incident it parallel to the principal axis now after reflection it should diverge in such a way that it should pass through the focus i appear to diverge from the focus not passing through the focus so if this is the direction from the focus this should diverge in such a way that it should appear to come from the focus appear to diverge from the focus so if i continue it like this this will be the direction of the focus so it will diverge like this if it is a straight line okay this is proper right so any ray parallel to the principal axis after reflection will diverge in such a way that it appear to come from focus now where do you indicate the angle of incidence and angle of reflection again we have to go for the uh, go with the help of normal how do you draw a normal jo join the center join towards the center like this continue this so this is the normal line drawn at this point which is the angle of incidence this one theta angle of reflection theta so we have got this so this part comes here so again i will explain a ray parallel to the principal axis diverges in such a way that it appears to come from focus the diverging should be such that the first law of reflection should be obeyed angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection so how do you get the angle of incidence and reflection just by drawing a normal and normal line always is directed towards the center of the circular path a uh, circular uh, this uh, spherical uh, part okay now so this is uh, the direction towards the focus and this is uh, m the point where ray is incident this is a normal drawn to the principal axis m d now try to get theta and 2 theta now you see a straight line normal and reflected direction normal uh, this one uh, proceeded here this is theta this should be theta correct a straight line a straight line vertically opposite angle theta and now suppose if i proceed this simply for my understanding like this uh, which i can write it as 2 theta a straight line a parallel straight line and this is a bisector correct this one reflected ray is a bisector which passes appear to come from focus this is 2 theta so shall i write this as 2 theta did you understand why it is 2 theta a ray parallel to this one these two are parallel lines this is a bisector a line passing through the focus is a bisector this is 2 theta and this is 2 theta they are uh, adjacent angles so this total 2 theta and this one they are adjacent angles so two parallel lines and this is a bisector Ad uh, uh, this uh, uh, adjacent angles 2 theta and if this is the exterior angle for this triangle for this angle this is exterior angle it should be the sum of the interior opposite angle so this should be theta theta plus theta exterior angle 2 theta so this is the diagram once you go for this diagram this is very much similar to this take the triangles mdf and mdc it is finished and uh, where is the focal length here from the pole to the focus 
and from the pole to the center radius so everything goes like this but you must know how to draw the diagram for this and everything goes in the same way but usual asked question is using concave mirror and if it is not mentioned prefer concave mirror uh, if it is mentioned of course usually this will be asked but better you be ready with this diagram also so that if it is asked same derivation holds good because everything notation we have taken in the same way okay you can just note it down how to draw this thank you Ich nehme mich heute.